Welcome. This is a recorded information session for patients awaiting mastectomies at the Jewish General Hospital in Montreal, Quebec. It is presented by the breast cancer pivot nurses and occupational therapist at the Siegel Cancer Center, as well as the Hope and Cope physiotherapist. This information should not be considered as medical advice. It is not to be used in place of a visit with a doctor, nurse, or other healthcare professional. If you have questions about your individual medical situation, please consult with your healthcare professional. This session will begin with a short presentation from the nurses, followed by the occupational therapist, and ending with the physiotherapist. I'm going to be presenting the nursing considerations. Uh, so I'm going to be going over the surgery overview of uh, mastectomy surgery. Uh, discussing going home after surgery, pain control, how to care for your dressing after surgery, and things to monitor and look out for in the post-operative period. <clears throat> so you're going to be having a, a mastectomy surgery. A simple mastectomy is where all the breast tissue is removed, as well as a sentinel, sentinel node uh, where the, the surgeon does a biopsy on the lymph node. A modified radical mastectomy is where all the breast, can the breast tissue is removed and the surgeon does what's called an axillary lymph node dissection where uh, most of the lymph nodes are removed from underneath the, the arm. And some women choose to have reconstruction, uh, some choose not to have reconstruction. Reconstruction is usually done at the same time as uh, the mastectomy surgery, however uh, it can be done separately. It can be done uh, many months after after the initial mastectomy. So for reconstruction, there's different types of breast reconstruction surgery. Uh, the most common one performed at the Jewish General Hospital involves placing an implant above the muscle at the time of the mastectomy. This type of reconstructive surgery is going to be the focus of this presentation. But if you've opted for another type of reconstructive surgery, please contact Kim or Andrea for more detailed information. This is what the implant looks like. And uh, it, as I said before, it, it's, put, um, it's put at the place of the breast above the, uh, ab above the muscle uh, after the mastectomy is done. The mastectomy with no reconstruction is sometimes done as an outpatient same-day surgery. However, you might have an overnight stay. And this type of surgery usually takes about one to two hours. You're going to stay in the recovery room afterwards until you've recovered from the anesthetic. Um, and the nurses are going to want to make sure that your pain is well controlled, that you're able to get out of bed, and, and that you're steady on your feet and also that uh, you're able to urinate on your own. And this might take a few hours, and it can be different for everybody. Please don't drive yourself home. Uh, ask somebody to pick you up from the hospital or plan on taking a taxi home. If you're having a reconstruction at the same time as the mastectomy, you're going to be admitted for an overnight hospital stay. This type of surgery usually takes about two to four hours. You're going to wake up in the recovery room after your surgery, but you'll be transferred to your inpatient unit once you've recovered from the anesthetic and that the nurses are, are sure that you're able to, your breathing is good, your oxygen levels are good, and once you're discharged from the hospital, please don't drive yourself home. Uh, ask someone to pick you up from the hospital or plan on taking a taxi because you're going to be very drowsy from the general anesthetic and it's not safe to drive. So there's certain ways that the surgeons, um, uh, there's certain techniques that surgeons use in order to identify the sentinel lymph node. Um, the sentinel lymph node is the um, is the lymph node that the uh, the tumor drains into. So it's the, it's, it's the lymph node that's closest to the tumor. Uh, so one, one way that they identify this is they 
inject a blue dye into the tumor uh, and this blue dye travels to the closest uh, lymph nodes and it helps the um, surgeon identify the uh, which lymph nodes need to be removed. This is, uh, this is sometimes done the day before surgery uh, or also the morning, sometimes the morning of surgery. Another way that uh, the surgeon can identify the sentinel uh, lymph node is by injecting a radioactive isotope into the tumor and then this material goes to the closest lymph nodes and he or she can use a Geiger meter to identify the, the, which lymph nodes are the sentinel ones. So for pain control, your doctor will prescribe you a pain medication before you leave the hospital. Um, it's important to take, take, your, take pain medication uh, as prescribed when you have pain. Uh, this can help in your, in your recovery. Uh, your, if, when you have reconstruction, you'll also be prescribed an antibiotic that, you're, that you take for 7 to 10 days after you leave the hospital. After this type of surgery, you might also experience pain to your upper arm, your shoulder, or your back on the same side of the surgery. If you have any questions about how to control your pain, or if your pain is not well controlled, call Kim or Andrea. Depending on your doctor, you'll be asked to remove your dressing anywhere between 48 and 72 hours after surgery. It's important not to get the dressing wet. Uh, while the dressing is still on, you can, you can sit in a tub of water uh, with water up to your waist and kind of do, uh, bait, do a sponge bath. Um, once you do remove the dressing, please don't remove the steri strips that are the little pieces of, um, they're little pieces of uh, tape that um, are, are, are over the incision to give it extra support. So you don't need to remove those. They're waterproof and you can remove them. Uh, th they will fall off by themselves in about two weeks. So for dressing care, depending on your surgeon, uh, dissolvable st stitches or surgical staples will be used to close the incision. If staples are used, there's going to be arrangements that will be made in, in, with, by the post-op nurses with your CLSC to remove them at a later date. This arrangement will be made the day of your surgery, and the CLSC will be contacting you. For dressing care for reconstruction, Dr. Dinosopoulos will see you 7 to 10 days after your surgery and will remove the dressing at that time. Again, don't get the dressing wet, uh, bathe to the waist and, and kind of sponge bathe, and don't remove any steri strips. It, also, it will also be him who will remove any sutures or staples when he feels that it's appropriate. This is a, a small diagram of what uh, steri strips look like. And this is what surgical staples look like. And as you can see, there's redness around uh, uh, the staples where they go into the skin. Uh, this is not thought of as an infection. It's more of an irritation. Uh, to the staples and once they're removed this usually, usually resolves. So after this surgery you will have a drain in place. Uh, it's called a Jackson Pratt drain. These drains are usually left in place for seven to day, ten days after surgery and they're, they're basically put there to drain any fluid that accumulates at the site of the surgery. Uh, they may be removed by the surgeon or the CLSC nurse. If you are having reconstruction, it, it's going to be Dr. Dinosopoulos who, who will remove the drain. And uh, he, he, he'll do this when, he, when it's appropriate. This is what the drain looks like. Uh, it's an important to remember to um, squeeze the, uh, the drain tight when you're recapping it to make sure that it has a good suction. Um, the nurses... Uh, on the, your post-op uh, unit will make sure that you're comfortable draining the fluid out of the Jackson Pratt drain before you're discharged home. So you're going to be asked to empty the drain two or three times each day 
and it's a good idea to record the amount that's drained each, each 24 hours. Um, as I mentioned before, make sure you squeeze the bulb as you close the cap on the drain after emptying it because this, is, uh, this helps it maintain suction. And you can shower with the drain in place uh, after your dressing is removed. There are post mastectomy bras that can be purchased. Um, they're convenient because uh, they have a little pocket where you can put the drain in. Uh, usually they, they button up in the front uh, or, or have a zipper. If you're interested in getting more information on where you could find a post mastectomy bra, uh, please don't hesitate to call uh, Andrea or Kim. Just to go over a few things that can happen after this type of surgery, uh, sometimes you can develop what's called a hematoma. Uh, it's basically a collection of blood um, where you had the surgery, so it's, it looks like a big bruise. This will resolve by itself over time. Uh, it's not dangerous, it's not an infection, uh, but it's, it's a big bruise that needs time to, um, to reabsorb. Something else that can develop after this type of surgery is called a seroma. And this is a collection of lymph fluid at the area where you had your surgery. And it can, also, it can often look quite swollen. It can, it's like a, a small ball uh, under, either under your armpit or like around the area where your breast incision is. So these, as I mentioned before, they usually go away on their own. Sometimes if, if, if it's a large hematoma or seroma, it can take uh, quite a bit of time, sometimes weeks or even months. If it's causing a lot of pain or sensitivity, don't hesitate to call Kim or Andrea. Signs and symptoms of infection include heat and redness to the site, increased pain, pus, uh, or fever, uh, 38 degrees Celsius or higher. If you have the dressing on, you're not going to be able to see the incision itself, but if you feel a sudden increase in pain, if uh, you develop a fever, you develop chills, you feel unwell, this could be a sign uh, that you have an infection. Once the dressing is off, obviously you can monitor, you can monitor the incision more closely for the other signs. If you experience any of these symptoms, please call Kim or Andrea, but if it happens during the weekend or off hours, uh, like during the night, and you don't feel like you can wait until the next day to see us, please um, go to the emergency room. This is a picture of what an infection looks like. So as you can see, it's usually like an angry red, it's hot to the touch, sometimes it can be swollen. Uh, something that can develop after you have breast surgery with uh, lymph nodes removed is called lymphedema. And what it is, it's an accumulation of fluid that occurs when the body can't properly drain lymph fluid from an extremity or a body part. So in the case of breast, breast surgery, it's usually the arm, chest, or upper back. And people at, who are at risk include people who have had an axillary lymph node uh, dissection or, or, yeah, or many uh, lymph nodes removed under the arm. Also, you're at greater risk if you've had uh, radiation therapy to the, to the area. Um, but even, even if you've just had one or two lymph nodes removed in, uh, as, for the lymph node biopsy, it's still a possibility uh, to develop lymphedema. So it's a lifelong risk. It's, it's important to be aware of it. So prevention is the key. Uh, protect the at-risk arm. So wear gloves when gardening or doing dishes. Uh, keep the arm clean, dry, and well moisturized. Um, don't have any blood pressure or blood tests done on that arm. And avoid any nicks or cuts. And don't cut cuticles when you're doing manicures. If symptoms do develop, such as uh, like the women usually describe describe it as the first signs as the arm feeling heavy, uh, they might notice that there's their rings or their watch don't fit anymore, or getting tight. 
this could be a sign that lymphedema is developing. So speak to your doctor about getting a referral to a specialized physiotherapist uh, who can uh, assess you and, and evaluate you for this, for lymphedema. My name is Kyla Johnson, and I'm the occupational therapist here at the Seagal Cancer Center at the Jewish General Hospital in Montreal. Today I'm going to be giving you some pointers of things that you can do in preparation for your surgery, the day of, and how to resume your daily activities following your breast cancer surgery. As you're anticipating your breast cancer surgery, you can begin to prepare and freeze extra meals. Look around the house and any large tasks that need to get done should be done in advance. In your kitchen, if there are objects that you use frequently that are stored above your head or below your waist, consider taking these objects and leaving them out on the counter for easy access. Make sure that you designate a driver home from your surgery, as well as arrange for any child or pet care that may be necessary. On the day of your surgery, consider wearing a button or a zip-up shirt to ease dressing following surgery. Make sure that you bring any medications that you may need for the full day. And always leave any valuables at home. While you're recovering from your surgery, make sure to always listen to your body. Although discomfort is normal, any lingering pain means you're pushing yourself too far. It's normal to feel tired after a surgery. In order to best manage this fatigue, prioritize which activities and tasks are most important for you to accomplish. Take rest breaks between activities and be open to accepting help from those around you. Following your surgery, it's important that you remain active and engaged in your daily activities. Make sure that you use your arm on the surgical side to brush your teeth, wash your face, and eat. You may find yourself more comfortable in bed if you're sleeping on your back or unaffected side for the first two weeks. For those undergoing a bilateral mastectomy, sleeping in a reclining chair may be the most comfortable position. Bringing extra pillows into the bed or chair with you may help for you to prop yourself up into a comfortable position. Getting out of bed can be easiest by rolling onto the unaffected side, dropping your feet off the bed, and using your unaffected or your stronger arm to push yourself up into seated. To get into bed, simply reverse the process by sitting on the edge of the bed, lowering yourself down with your strongest arm, bringing the feet up and rolling onto your back. Once your dressings have been removed, you are able to shower. In order to best manage the drains, we suggest taking a lanyard or making a loose necklace out of a shoestring or ribbon, which then can be attached with the clips on the drains, as you see in this picture. In the shower, avoid letting the shower run directly onto the incision or the cut area. Instead, simply let the soapy water gently run around the area. Button up or zip up shirts that close in the front and a front closing bra may be more comfortable following your mastectomy operation. Never drive while taking prescription pain medications and make sure to always wear your seatbelt. You may find it more comfortable to cushion the seatbelt with a small pillow or a folded towel. It's recommended for the first four to six weeks following your surgery that you don't lift anything heavier than 10 pounds. Examples could include wet laundry, bags of groceries, and even your child. If you must lift this heavy weight, make sure to always hold the object close to your body with two hands. It's also recommended that heavy housework like vacuuming, scrubbing the floors, is put off for at least four to six weeks after your surgery. Everyone recovers differently and you may need to take some time off work following your surgery. Talk to your doctor about the best time to return to work. 
If you're concerned about your return to work and your ability to do so, please speak with your occupational therapist. There are several community resources available for people whose lives have been touched by breast cancer. The Hope and Cope Wellness Center can support the West Island Cancer Wellness Center, Virage Quebec, and the Quebec Breast Cancer Foundation are excellent resources where you can find additional support in the community. Hi, my name is Maurice and I'm going to review the rehab uh, portion. I'm a physiotherapist in oncology. So exercises after a mastectomy uh, are going to be very important. And the objectives are uh, first to regain your arm movement, so the, the shoulder um, whereby the surgery was done, you want to be able to, uh, to do some exercises to regain that mobility. I'm going to teach you some scar, um, some scar tissue massages once the scar has been healed. Um, other objectives of rehab is to reduce risk of side effects, so such as lymphedema that was discussed before. And another important aspect is to maintain or improve posture, which I'm going to go through um, in the next sections. So some tips for exercises. The first tip is to wear comfortable clothing. So for example, what you can do is you can uh, find one of those old, big, um, cotton baggy t-shirts that we all have. And something cotton allows the skin to breathe um, so that you're comfortable when you're doing these exercises. When you're doing your exercises, you also want to do them slowly. Um, so you want to take your time. The exercises should not be painful. However, with certain movements, you will feel a stretch, and this is um, normal when you're doing your exercises. Uh, in terms of drain restrictions, there are restrictions um, with the Jackson uh, drain that was discussed earlier. So while the drain is in place, uh, you do not want to move your arm higher than shoulder level. So as you can see here in the image, you don't want to go higher than your shoulder forward, nor do you want to bring your arm higher than your shoulder to the side. Um, and the reason for this is that we know through literature, if you raise your arm past 90 degrees or shoulder height, um, there is it puts you at risk for developing lymphedema. So we do want to minimize that. Um, so maintaining that restriction while the drain is in place is very important. Once that drain is removed, then it's safe to raise your arm above 90 degrees. So some considerations for reconstruction. Um, day, the first few days after surgery, so around one to seven days post-op, um, as I just mentioned, you don't want to lift your arm, your operated arm above your shoulder height while your drain is in place. Um, other things to remember, you don't want to push or pull excessively with that operated arm because it'll still be a little bit uncomfortable at the beginning. So you want to, you want to just be cautious about that. What you do want, however, is to get up and walk around as much as possible post-op and that really helps with the recovery process of things. Um, and the last thing is, during the first week, you know, you just had a surgery, please do ask for assistance when you do need it, because this will really help um, the rehab aspect of things, especially the first few days. Um, other considerations for reconstruction. So as mentioned before, there are two different types of the reconstruction. The one step whereby you get the prosthesis in place um, right out of the first surgery versus the two step where you have the expander in place um, and then there is a period where you heal and the, um, the tissue is filled before you go in for the final surgery. Uh, so once the drains are removed, that's when you can begin your shoulder exercises. And this is regardless of which type of surgery, whether it's the one-step versus the two-step procedure. Um, what's important as well is you don't want to push anything excessively. And what we consider excessive is around 10 pounds, so nothing more than 10 pounds on the operated side for the first six to eight weeks. Um, so this is just, again, to make sure that you're healing well after the reconstruction. You don't have any... Uh, complications with um, with the muscle that might be uh, impacted during this type of procedure. Um, another recommendation is sleep position. So usually lying on your back um, is comfortable. However, a lot of patients do feel comfortable lying on a firm bed wedge, which is 
shown here in the image below, um, or a reclining chair. So just having that slight elevation for the first one to two weeks um, often helps relieve any upper back pain, um, which might be experienced after uh, reconstruction. Um, exercise considerations for reconstruction. So um, regardless of whichever type of procedure, whether it's the one step or the two step, um, gentle stretches for chest wall and your pec muscle tightness can start four to six weeks after surgery. So the reason why we wait a little bit longer is because we do want to make sure that the scar is healed well. Um, and the pec muscle, you don't want to start to stretch it too quickly because again, this muscle might be um, involved with the reconstruction. So you want to give it a little bit of time before you start to, to do any stretches to this particular muscle. Um, other considerations, you want to avoid uh, strenuous exercise such as high impact aerobics, jogging, swimming, um, any form of lifting weight until your range is back to normal. So all of the activities that you were doing prior, um, eventually you will get back to it, but just the first few weeks while you recover, you want to avoid any high impact um, exercise. Um, for reconstruction, um, before you start doing any of the exercises that you were doing pr prior to your surgery, um, I would ad highly advise that you do speak with your physiotherapist to ensure that your range of motion is recovered, that you don't have any side effects after the reconstruction, um, because some modifications may be necessary prior to you getting back to your complete um, exercise regimen. Um, other types of reconstruction, in fact, include um, different procedures such as the tram procedure, uh, a Dieppe procedure, or a latissimus dorsi flap. And these types of surgeries, they're all uh, quite different, in fact. Um, however, if you are, if you know that you're going to undergo one of these three procedures, I would highly recommend that you book a follow-up with your physiotherapist four weeks after your surgery for an individualized follow-up because these three different surgeries all have different side effects and the recovery is going to be a little bit different than the previous two that were mentioned. Um, these extensive surgeries may correlate with specific post-op mobility and strength deficits and this is why physiotherapy evaluation four weeks post-op is going to be very critical for your recovery. Um, a progressive program to regain mobility and strength should be provided by your physio as there are very specific guidelines that apply to core strengthening, particularly for the TRAM and the DIA procedure um, because of the uh, abdominal involvement that's, uh, that's there. And different types of strengthening is going to be important also for the latissimus dorsi. So again, I highly recommend that you please book with your physiotherapist four weeks post-op after this surgery. Now, in terms of exercises, um, the following exercises I'm going to explain should be done after your surgery. However, maintaining that restriction while the drain is in place is very important. Once that drain is removed, then it's safe to raise your arm above 90 degrees. So the first exercise, um, what you're going to do is you're going to lie on your back. So for example, if you have a yoga mat, you can use a yoga mat to lie on your back. Or if, you're, if it's more comfortable, you can lie on a bed. Um, once, you've, once you're lying on your back, you want to make sure that your knees are bent and that just helps to relax your back muscles and your feet should be shoulder width apart. Your feet should not be together because again that's going to help with your spine alignment. And what you're going to need is a stick of some sort. So some patients have, for example, a cane lying around at home. Um, if you don't have a cane, you can get your broomstick and you just remove the bottom of the brush and you have a nice long stick. So first exercise um, is the cane over the head. So what you want to do is you want to hold the stick shoulder width apart so your arms are comfortable by your side, just like uh, depicted in the image. And what you want to do is you want to slowly bring your arms up. And as you can see, as the stick goes higher and higher, it's going to come up ab above your head more and more. And the goal is to bring your arms completely straight above your head. So each day you're going to notice that you're able to lift your arm a little bit higher and higher and your unaffected arm is going to help you. So you'll feel a little gentle stretch every time until eventually you'll be able to bring your arm completely straight above your head. 
Now, each of these exercises, you want to do 10 repetitions. So that means you want to do this 10 times, nice and slow. You want to try to aim for two to three sets. So that means you can start with two sets, so that'll be a total of 20. Or you can aim to get to three sets, so that'll be 30. And you want to aim to do all these exercises at least two, three times a day. And that repetition will, will start to really help with your shoulder mobility return. Now, in terms of the second exercise, the snow angel exercise, again, you're still on your back, whether it's on the bed or the yoga mat. Your knees are bent in the same position as the first image. And what you want to do is you want to place your arms by your side so that your palms are facing up comfortably. You want to keep your arms nice and straight. And what you're doing, just like a snow angel, you're gliding your arms by your side and slowly, slowly, you're going to bring them higher and higher each day until you can get your arms to touch above your head. So again, it's the same concept. You want to go every day a little bit higher until your arms reach above your head. So same idea as, as previously. You want to try to aim for 10 repetitions, two to three sets, um, two, three times a day. The third exercise is done standing. So with that stick that you, uh, that you have, what you're going to do is the stick that's that's um, the stick is going to be placed um, in your hand, both your arms. Your good arm is going to help push your affected arm away from your body. So in this image, her left arm is the affected arm, and she's pushing it away from her body. So the whole purpose of this exercise is to bring your arm slowly by your side, and as you can see throughout each image. The, the ultimate goal is to raise your arm completely straight by your side. Now, one thing to remember is very important here is that your arm is really parallel to your body. So your arm is not above you or it's not too far behind your back. It's really comfortably parallel next to you so that with the stick, you gently push it slowly, slowly until eventually it can raise all the way up. Now, the next, slide, the next exercise, excuse me, is um, the exercise with either a scarf um, or a towel, and you can find either of those very easily at home. And this exercise, the arm that's behind your back is in fact the arm that has had the surgery. So in this case, the, the picture shows that her left arm is behind her back. And what you want to do is, with your good arm, you want to slowly pull your affected arm up so that it gets higher and higher um, above your back. And you go as far as you can go, and then you gently release with that scarf or that towel. And again, you want to be able to do this slowly so that it doesn't pull on the muscle. And the repetitions, again, are going to be two, 10 repetitions, two to three sets, two, three times a day. Now, the next set of exercises, there are in fact two separate exercises here. And I refer to these exercises as the spider crawl. So the first exercise, um, the image is showing the woman standing next to the wall. And you're going to start with your arm straight by your side. And just like a spider with your fingertips, you want to slowly crawl up that wall keeping your elbow nice and straight. That's a very important point. And as you get closer to the wall, you kind of want to scooch over until your arm is nice and straight, um, leaning against the wall, and your body is as close as possible to the wall, which is shown in the second image there. And it's the exact same concept for the second image, except this time she's facing the wall instead of being um, to the side of the wall. Same idea, the arm is nice and straight, elbow remains nice and straight, and she's crawling up with her fingertips, and as you get higher and higher, your arm um, should get nice and straight towards the wall. So the spider crawl is, ensures that your, your shoulder mobility, the, the flexion and the abduction movements of your shoulder, um, will start to return back to normal. Um, so again, what's important about this exercise is Art is to maintain your elbow um, nice and straight. Finally, for the last exercise, um, the shoulder blade squeezes. This, in fact, is a 
uh, gentle form of strengthening, while the rest that I've explained are uh, range of motion exercises. And this gentle strengthening allows to start to strengthen your upper back, which often gets weaker after any form of breast surgery. So to do this exercise, you want to stand up nice and tall. You want to keep your arms by your side, just like the first image, at 90 degrees. And what you want to do is two steps. First, you want to bring your shoulder back. And the second step is you want to try to get your elbows to squeeze or get them to kiss. They won't touch, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to get those shoulder blades to squeeze in together and you want to hold this squeeze for around three to five seconds and then once you're done you want to release um, back to the starting position. So the whole point of this is to help you maintain or improve your posture and to strengthen those small upper muscles um, like I've mentioned before that can, can get affected after your, uh, your reconstruction surgery or a, com or a complete mastectomy. Now, in terms of a scar massage, scar massages are actually very important for um, the, the, the improvement of the elasticity of the skin. Now, when to do this, you want to do this once the scar is healed. So most scars will take around three to four weeks to heal completely. You wanna make sure that they're closed, that there's no risk of infection. Um, and to do this, the best time is to do it right after your shower because the pores of your skin are still are nice and open and you want to take whatever oils or, or creams that you're using. So often we recommend natural oils or a vino and you want to apply a little bit of that oil or cream over your scar and there's two techniques that can be used. Either using two fingers just like the first image and what you want to do is you want to massage in circles over that scar and also two three centimeters above and below to make sure that all that scar tissue under is is massaged so that you can start to slowly improve that elasticity and decrease the tightness of the scar. Now there's another technique which is shown in the second image where if you if there's a little bit of skin you're able to pick up the skin gently with your two fingers and slowly massage that scar again you want to cover the entire scar and two three centimeters above and below the scar now i'm going to review some possible surgical side effects that may happen after mastectomy or reconstruction and one common one is what we call an axillary web syndrome, or often patients will report it as cording. So cording um, is often seen after this type of surgery. And what it is, it's, it's like a cord or like a guitar string cord that starts under the armpit or in the axilla area. And often it can go into the upper arm, sometimes passing the elbow, just like uh, is shown in the first image. Um, sometimes cords can even extend into the forearm um, and even into the thumb area. Now these cords can cause a, a lot of tightness and pain um, going through the arm and it can actually restrict some movements whether it's shoulder movement or um, elbow movement if it goes through into the elbow. If you do feel this cord-like sensation, um, please contact your physiotherapist so that she or he can do a full um, proper evaluation and there are specific rehab, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, exercises that can be done to um, alleviate this cord. Now, in summary, um, six weeks after your surgery, if you cannot do the following movements, please contact a physiotherapist. So the first movement is being able to bring your arms by your side so that your arms come up above your head. The second movement is being able to bring your arms um, towards the middle of your back. So for example, the ability to undo your bra. This type of movement is very important. The third image is bringing your arms forward as shown in the image. The uh, the fourth and fifth is basically able to bend your arms at 90 degrees inwards and outwards, just like the image. And finally, the last uh, movement is bringing your arm into this extended position. So 
just for um, the terminology, the first movement is referred to as abduction. The second movement is referred to hand behind your back. The third movement is referred to as flexion. Then you have internal and external movements of the shoulder, which is depicted in the fourth and fifth image, and you have extension of the shoulder in the last image. So all these movements, um, the shoulder is naturally able to do, and the goal is to make sure that you're able to return these movements um, according to what you had before your surgery. So again, if you do not have these, these movements after your surgery by six weeks, please contact a physiotherapist. Um, so here I just want to reiterate some of the Hoping Cope services and they, there are a lot of services particularly for breast cancer patients and the goal is really to help get um, active all our breast cancer uh, patients. So there is an exercise therapist, there is a physiotherapist at uh, our wellness center um, and all the services there are free um, so it's important to, to check it out, you know, speak with your therapist and see what you're able to do. And the website for more information is just listed below at, at hopeandcope.com. So finally, just to summarize, um, the slide here indicates all the contacts of the, of the personnel involved. So we have the breast pivot nurses listed, the occupational therapist, and the physiotherapist. So Nadia Smirnov um, will be the physio you can contact at the Wellness Center um, in case you have any questions or concerns that she can address after your surgery.